You see, if you really look at the history of India, uh, in the last 10 years, the kind of statements that have come from the highest office of the country, namely the office of the Prime Minister, have been so divisive, so utterly divisive, that I don't think in the history of this country any Prime Minister has ever made the kind of divisive statements that our dear Prime Minister has made. Not only him, but members of the political party to which he belongs. Even now in Assam, what is happening? There's the chief minister who is talking about love jihad, flood jihad. Now it's flood jihad, and that is directed to a Muslim university, which is one of the top 200 in this country, right? And uh, and the kind of uh, uh, you know directives that are issued by the state of Uttar Pradesh when the Kavadias were going saying the names of owners should be given for what purpose? Then the kind, the talk about the pink revolution, the infiltrators in this country, you can recognize people from their clothes, and in the past they talked about Shamshan Ghat and, and, and uh, Kabristan, expenditure on electricity, uh, loved, I mean the kind of things that they have been saying over the years. Right? This is this is this is not right. I mean, I think that we should have a discussion on the civil code. There's no harm in having a discussion, but you can't do it when you are you have been actually taking forward a divisive agenda, and then you are talking about uniform civil code. Right? What about all those women? You know, triple talaq has been abolished by judgment of the Supreme Court. Maintenance is not now allowed under the laws of this country for Muslim women. Right? What about those Hindu women who have been thrown out of their houses? The husband doesn't have to even say triple talaq. He just throws them out of the house. The doors of that house are shut and she keeps on running from pillar to post, paying lawyers, trying to get maintenance. Years pass, she, is, she has custody of the children. What about those Hindu women? And what about the Hindus who want to enter uh, from Bangladesh? They may be denied entry. Because these are the directors. Why? Because they are Bengali Hindus. So this is all politics. And when you talk of infiltrators, who are the real infiltrators in this country? The real infiltrators are who, who usurp power by, uh, by making people ministers and, you know, toppling elected governments, using the 10th schedule to their advantage. They are the real infiltrators in this country. They have infiltrated into the political system and, and, and destroying the foundations of democracy. So there was a very long uh, discussion and demand for the elections in Jammu and Kashmir. Today, the Election Commission of India will, will be announcing the dates for the election schedule in Jammu and Kashmir and Haryana and other states also hopefully. How do you see this? Well, you know, when this uh, matter came up at the Supreme Court and it was argued in the Supreme Court, the Solicitor General made a statement by September right, um, the, the, the elections will be held and statehood will be given. But in the meantime, the Jammu and Kashmir Reorganized Act, Act was passed, and in that Act, all the powers are now with the governor. Even the cabinet, even after the election, cannot set the agenda without the approval of the governor. The, all aspects relating to police, public order, and everything are under the control of the governor. All discretionary power is with the governor. All home affairs are with the governor. So with the army there, with the governor's power there, what is left with these elected representatives? There will only be supplicants to the governor. So there is no democracy. What are you talking about? So these are all agendas. They have their agendas. And I want to understand one thing. They, they kept on saying normalcy in Kashmir, right? Tourism has increased. The fact of the matter is that only 14% of the tourists go to Kashmir, to the valley. 86% go to Jammu. And now they talk of increase of tourism by, by adding the pilgrims who go there, which were never added before. Now they add the pilgrims to, and say they are also tourists. So manipulation of facts, manipulation of data. And if everything is so calm, why don't you give them statehood? Now from 1990, we're in 2024. So five years. And you say normalcy has come back to Jammu Kashmir, terrorism has gone down, which is also factually not correct, because if you look at the years before 2014, the numbers were less 
of terrorist incidents than they are incidents as they are today. So manipulation of facts. Give them statehood. Let the accountability be of those elected people. Let them face the music. Because a governor is not answerable to them. Governor is answerable to the powers in Delhi. So the people of, of, of Jammu and Kashmir will not get the kind of government that they need and they want.